Hey everybody, this is part two of the videos that I'm doing on the hydraulic lift conversion on my John Deere 214. And I've finally gotten that finished and today I want to go over a few little things I ran into here and there when I was doing the installation. Like I said in the first video, I have the link for the installation instructions in the video description of that video and I'll put it in this video also. Um, for the most part, following those instructions is pretty straightforward. But it did run into a few things that were either confusing or different than whatever the instructions said. The first thing that I ran into was the fact that they have you relocate the coil and the instructions. And what I found was that <clears throat> maybe it's on the newer tractors than the, than the instructions are from. But they have you flip the bracket right here that holds the coil onto the side of the engine. And on mine, the bracket's a totally different style bracket. And flipping it would do absolutely nothing for relocating the coil. Um, so in my case, um, I didn't relocate it and everything was fine. Not a big deal there. One of the main problems that I did struggle with when I did the installation though was the hoses. Um, you can see in this picture right here, they have this hose guide and that's one of those parts that generally you don't see with the kits that are being sold used. I don't know if just people just don't take them off the tractor or what, but Mine didn't have it, and so what I did was I made one out of a uh, Teflon-like material. It was you know, I made it a little bit thicker than the bracket that it originally would have had, but and installed that in its place. But regardless, I still had a lot of trouble getting the hoses to clear any moving parts that, as they come up through to go to the control valve, and um, I, I never was actually able to get those to completely not touch anything. So what I ended up doing was, I don't know if I can see it on the video here or not, I really can't get down in there. Um, but on mine, what I did was I put some anti-chafing material around the hoses where they were going to touch anything and, and so far so good on that. So I'm not real worried about it. It's something I'll just check every once in a while to make sure that nothing's rubbing through. Okay, so moving on to the pump and pulley mounting. Like I mentioned in the first video, you really want to make sure you have the proper washer that's supposed to space between the pulley and the other washer that's already on the crankshaft. That's going to ensure that that pulley is sitting out far enough. This clearance here is very close between the belt and the, um, <clears throat> the screen screws that are on there. And without that, you're definitely going to start hitting things with, you know, without that in there. Uh, so on that same note, you, know, that you have to have a few washers that's properly spaced out this bracket for the pump here. They're just standard washers from the hardware store. I think they asked for three of them there. And then you have to replace this motor mount bolt right here with one that's probably about a half an inch longer. I had one on hand, but you know, if you don't have one, you'll just have to go to the hardware store. And what that's for is to allow for the thickness of the bracket and the um, black square piece of metal that, you know, that holds the bracket down to the motor mount. So other than those things, it's pretty straightforward. Just be careful, take your time, um, and there shouldn't be any problems. So let's go ahead and fire this up. All right, there was one other thing I forgot to mention. At the very end, whenever you go through these instructions, you have to modify the side cover right here. You have to cut out a small piece to clear the new side panel. And um, just all I can say about that is be careful and take your time. Uh, the instructions that I have have the template for it inside. What you do want to make sure though, if you do it, is that you, when you print that out, it has the, uh, the actual size of what the template's supposed to be printed below it. Go ahead and measure that and make sure it's the same so you make sure you print it at the scale. And then, um, you know, like I said, take your time when you cut, maybe cut a little bit less off than you need to at first and then work your way out to where the dotted line is to make sure you don't take too much and uh, you'll be fine. 